All right, so video number three on pure public goods, we have the, like, what is the problem with pure public goods and the solution? So the problem with pure public goods is that because they are non-excludable, it's not obvious how we're going to get money to provide them, okay? Uh, because people can use it without paying, but all of these things that we love to have, right? Firework shows, Wikipedia, any digital file freely available, national defense, radio station, right? These are all great things, but they all take money to provide, right? You got to pay people to do the jobs related to these. You got to pay for all the infrastructure related to these. These are expensive things, and so we need money to make them. But if people can use it without paying, how do we get money? Okay, so uh, that problem we call the free rider problem. Okay, so the free rider problem. Okay, so if you want to jot that in your notes, so some people can use the good without paying for it. It's not clear how we'll get the money to provide the pure public good. Okay. So that's our free rider problem. So free riders are the people who use something without paying for it. Okay. So you'll notice we also get that for our congestible public goods. People who don't, like, you can still go and use a public water fountain even if you don't pay your taxes, right? Um, and so they're also going to have a, a, a similar problem. However, um, the pure public goods are of particular interest to us because they are non-rivalrous, right? So these are going to be kind of tricky because one person's use does affect another person's use. So we have to think carefully about how much we want to produce of these goods and be like, okay, should we build another public bathroom? Should we build another public park? Right? Like, does that make sense given our other priorities? Right? Whereas these, once we get them provided, everyone can use them. So what we care about is getting these provided in the first place, and then we can create like infinite value from people using this, this good. So we, we love these. These are great. Okay. So we have our free rider problem. So solutions. We have market and government solutions, uh, as with all of our market failures. So um, if we think about uh, radio stations, right? In the United States, radio stations are funded almost entirely by advertisements, as well as that's how YouTube is funded. Um, and so the, adver or the companies that buy advertisements on the radio pay the radio money, the radio station money. And the radio station uses that money to pay the salaries of the workers and to pay for infrastructure. And then the radio station gets provided, and you can pick it up on your radio and listen to it without paying anything. Um, sponsors or donations are another big thing. So maybe uh, a uh, you know a firework show could be sponsored by a company, and then you say to the company, "Hey, if you sponsor our firework show, we'll put a banner up that says fireworks sponsored by this company, right?" And that's again another form of advertising. Right? The company gets you know exposure and goodwill from supporting the fireworks show. Um, and then donations, right? So KBOC, a classical radio station, and Wikipedia solicit donations, and then they use the people's donations to fund the pure public good. Um, and that can work super well. Uh, both of those things are, are extremely valuable, and, and people are happy to donate to it. Okay. And then uh, we can also bundle the pure public good with something that people are willing to pay for. Um, so firework shows are often provided by a festival, right? And so the festival charges money for admission or for food, and then they use some of that money to provide the pure public good. Um, yeah, um, and then lighthouses were funded by user fees. So Ronald Coase, um, really prominent uh, economist in the 20th century, wrote a paper called Lighthouse in Economics, where he went back to the, the history of lighthouses to figure out how they were funded. Um, because it used to be that people thought that pure public goods had to be provided by the government. That there's no way for markets to solve this problem of how do you fund this thing that people can use without paying. But he realized, oh, well, okay all these lighthouses were funded by user fees on the docks nearby. So some of the boats would dock at the port nearby and then they would be charged a fee and that fee would be used to pay for the lighthouse. Okay, so we bundled the pure public good with something people are willing to pay for. Um, okay. And then the government solution is pretty simple. You just tax people and use that money to provide the pure public good. So that's how we provide national defense. The government taxes people and then hires the military and the CIA and all that. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys.